a lot of young guys and young girls feel lost. There's a very competitive spirit today in this world where self-grandizement based on looks and outward appearances are driving standards beyond most common ordinary people's abilities and capabilities to achieve. This puts tremendous pressure on many, many young people to try and be something that they're not and they lose their identity. And they look at other people like they're looking in a mirror. But it's a warped, wrong, deceived, delusional view of themselves. They can't become that person that's in the mirror. And they, we get out of touch with ourselves. We try and stretch for things that we can't. We think we have to be that way. And we lose our acceptance of ourselves. And we shouldn't. It's very hard to quieten yourself without any interferences in your mind, without any chemical assistances or alcohol assistances, whatever the things are that are on offer today by the devil to trick us into believing that that's the way to go. For the masses do choose this way. And it's very, very sad because they haven't been shown anything different. I've been in many families and um, gained their respect and lost their respect because I'm a straight person. I've just been able to manage my pathway through life with the assistance of the Holy Spirit and life and what it can do to you in a way in which I chose not to have drugs and alcohol and other um, things that were going, going to take away from the health of my life, from my mind. I knew I needed my mind. When you're in situations where you're growing up and you've got people turning violent and drug-induced violence and alcohol and all the competitiveness and wickedness and evil that comes with that, You learn quick that it's not the way to go, that you need your wits about you. You need to be prepared for what the possibilities are of something happening next. Something stupid. You need to be able to find a solution fast and be able to defend yourself and present a good version of yourself something that the devil wants to do to people who are lazy they want he wants to take away the best version of yourself and he's doing a good job of it with millions of people and people die they get sick they get maimed car accidents and other things kill themselves and others and maim themselves and others and family members and everything else because they're not in their right mind the Bible says take it or leave it it's up to you that God hasn't given us come here a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind as the rain starts to fall. Here, please, quick. Here, come up. The spirit of fear overtakes us when we've got accusations. Satan's the accuser. You've got this inner conscience that you always feel like you're in trouble, but you haven't 
done anything wrong. That sense that you're in trouble but you haven't done anything wrong. That could be the tormenting spirit trying to hold you down and disrupt your create ability, the way you create what's good for you in your life. Then, because God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, he's given us a spirit of courage, of love. There is no fear in love. Love takes courage. Then, of course, God hasn't given us an unsound mind. And if you do have an unsound mind, for, for reasons that are out of your control, I pray that you have a miracle or you've found some way of receiving some elements of peace when you can. He's given us a sound mind and a loving mind. And here, Hank, come here, mate. Come here, please. Here, please, quick. And I found myself in situations with people who had other people that they'd chosen to look after and I wasn't being selfish. It just wasn't something that I wanted to be involved in, in those relationships because I lived a life that was contrary to that. I hadn't done things or chosen things that had caused me to be disabled or caused anybody else to be. Um, and these people had made life choices that harmed them. It wasn't by accident, it was by choice. And these people can be hateful and vicious and jealous and conceited. And unfortunately, if you find yourself in a relationship with a female or a male that has these people living with them, relatives or whatever it is, that are conceited and jealous and possessive and disabled and infantile, you have to be able to say to yourself, look, You're doing what you've got to do, but this is not for me, and I need to leave this alone. Because these people will be in a situation where they want love and affection, but they're only willing to pay a certain amount of commitment for that. And that's called, when people come and do that, it's called covert narcissism or covert sinfulness where you're just a means of supply that they're unable to reach or get from the people that they really want to be with and love. And you won't be welcome. Believe you me, you will at first, but that's just to accomplish an, an initial need. Once that need's met, over a period of time, you'll soon realize that you're not as valuable as you think you are. If you're trying to make that person valuable, you're kidding yourself because they don't want to be. They'll probably tell you that they're not, and you'll probably refuse to listen, but you need to listen to these warnings. And when you hear these warnings, you need to take notice and go, well, okay, then I'll take that on board. That's my red flag or several red flags. These people will continue to give you red flags. They'll continue to give you red flags and then come on. And then all of a sudden, because you haven't listened, now you're blaming them for your trauma. But you didn't listen, you see. And it's time for you to listen Take stock of the reality of the situation. You don't belong there, they don't belong with you. It's just a mix up. Retract back to the life that you need to have. Let them get on with the life that they had before you come along. Go no contact and never ever go back.